hi guys welcome back to my channel a couple of you have asked if i've got clean eats analysis cookbook and of course i have i've had it for a couple of months now absolutely love it so i thought i'd sit down at your request and film a little book review of it before i start i want to say really sorry about the light it's the sun is setting i have my light here and it keeps changing so i'm aware of that i'm very sorry um but let's get to the book straight away she calls it the body bible and it so is a bible if you want to change your lifestyle and change those bad habits, this is definitely the book you need. She focuses so much on that it's not all about that quick fix, it's definitely a lifestyle change. And she has covered pretty much every single aspect that you need to know. And if you don't know Alice, she originally started on Instagram, so she used to post pictures of her food, what she was eating, and eventually got noticed, it got picked up, which I'm so happy for her. And now she works with LDM Muscle and she's a personal trainer. I think she's also a nutritionist and there's just no stopping this woman. So let's just get right into it and let's start with the content. So we have introduction, food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, exercise, and an index. And really the first couple of pages are her talking about her journey and if you get this book definitely do not skip these pages because it's so important to understand Alice's journey and I bet a lot of you will be able to relate to this so for example she spoke about going to uni and just putting on weight there because I think when everybody has that kind of new lease of life you just your eating habits just go straight out the window she also talks about her mother that was overweight and her sister that had diabetes so those as well as other things made an impact so I think it's always nice to hear the author's journey and next we go to frequently asked questions so how often do you exercise do you have rest days how long did your transformation take do you ever have cheat meals do you drink alcohol what do you snack on that's something I always want to know and she covers it in this book and lots lots more and the next few pages she said what is this book about so it's a guaranteed path to a healthy mind and healthy body, a lifestyle that you can live on on a budget because that's always so necessary that a lot of these healthy recipes come with expensive ingredients, a way to take control of your mind and body, a regime that will give you more energy, help you sleep and vitally help you lose weight, a book that will empower and energise you to make a permanent change, a winning combination of healthy eating and exercise that you will love, a promise for permanent results, a collection of delicious, non-fussy, stress-free recipes for busy people, and that is so important to have things that don't stress you out and that don't take long to cook, a group of exercises that target specific body areas and issues, and then she's got what this book isn't, so a yo-yo diet, about restriction or denial, about being hard on yourself, about cutting out specific food groups, about feeling hungry because I think when people say they're on a diet these are all the things that happen to them because they don't do it the right way and then she's got lots of hints and tips before you get started and I won't read these out because I don't want to spoil it all and then she has which I love an example of how she used to eat and then how she eats now before she started she was nine stone five for breakfast she used to have two slices of toast with butter and jam her current weight of eight stone, she has one slice of rye bread toasted with scrambled eggs. For a snack, she used to have sugary cereal bars, which are always promoted as healthy, but quite often they are not. And now she snacks on two rice cakes with peanut butter. So they're just some of the examples. And then you can see there, I hope it's focusing, of examples of how she used to look and then how she looks now. And then like most cookbooks, she has her staples, so rye bread, soy sauce, extra virgin oil, tin tomatoes, nuts, sweet potatoes, coconut oil, apple cider, and then on the next page, feta cheese, almond butter, which I just do not like and I'm trying to like so much because I know it's good for me, salmon, tomatoes, avocados, banana, Greek yogurt, eggs, pomegranate seeds, and what else we got? Lemon. Let's go into the food. So we're starting with breakfast and you won't be able to see it on camera but she's got a little paragraph there where she talks 
about her journey to having breakfast or so when you wake up your body has been fasting since your dinner the previous evening so it's important to have a meal that will fill you up and provide you with the right balance of nutrients to tackle the day so she's given you the science in the background to why it is so good to have a good breakfast and the first one is stuffed french toast with almond butter and banana i follow alice on twitter and i always see people saying that this is their favorite i haven't tried it yet because i'm not a fan of almond butter but i do love strawberries and do love toast and bananas so i think those combinations together are going to work really well and you'll see like a few cookbooks that i reviewed so far um easy ingredients and not very long at all to make which is very important especially for the morning because you don't want to be cooking something that is taking forever and then you've got super green smoothies got kiwi avocado greek yogurt spinach lime cucumber and almond milk coconut and vanilla protein pancakes with mango chai seed jam this is one that i definitely have tried and it really was delicious and then on the next page banana and fig sweet omelettes like some of the other cookbooks that i have these are all maybe ingredients that I've had on their own, but I've never thought of combining them together. So this is one thing that I love about Alice's book as well. So this is another recipe that I've tried, and it's butternut squash parma ham squeak with fried eggs, and it really was delicious. And even if you make this bottom bit, the squeak, for the day before, you can just have it cold or you can heat it up to save you even more time in the morning. And just flicking through a few more, we've got parsnip chorizo hash with paprika and fried eggs, caramelized banana and peanut butter sundae. I've kind of always been one of those people who just have sweet things in the morning. So cereal, porridge, I mean, things that I class as sweet, like yogurt. And when I first bought this book, I was thinking, smoked salmon and scrambled eggs, do I really want that in the morning? Can I stomach that? Do I want avocado? But because they're such lovely recipes, and when you get in the habit of making things like that, you wake up and you start craving butternut squash. It's quite weird. <laughs> so next we're going to move on to lunch. And the first one that I come to is chili beef lettuce wraps. Harissa chicken with pomegranate cauliflower rice and coriander. Chili prawn salad and rice cabbage slaw. That looks so good. I know one of my friends who love prawns will definitely like this. And then one of my favorites, is butternut squash chili and feta fritter this is so good even my mum and dad asked what it was because it smelled and looked so delicious and it says serves to this lasted me probably three days i think i used to have it cold when i got home from work or i'd have it in the evening or i'd even take some to work to have and it really does fill you up one recipe that i've turned over to make soon is this one teriyaki steak skewers with Asian style greens and Alice is all about that healthy clean eating food does not need to be simple and boring you can add so many spices and different veg to it to really make it more interesting and still stay on that healthy radar and then we've got jerk chicken with mango salad and again this is in the lunch section but if you don't want it for lunch you can just have it for dinner there's nothing that kind of sets it out and says what you do and don't have to do at certain times and then last one on this section, there's loads more, but I'm just gonna pick these ones. Roasted tomatoes on avocado and sourdough toast, which looks so good. I'm quite jealous that that's not for my dinner tonight. Next, we're gonna go with dinner. So another one that I've made is warm roasted butternut squash, kale and feta salad with pomegranates. This was like a melt in the mouth. If you buy this book, this definitely has to be one that you make straight away. It's got butternut squash, coconut oil, red onion, kale, small tomatoes, feta cheese, pomegranate seeds, salt, but I never really put salt in, um, three tablespoons of extra virgin oil, one tablespoon of cider vinegar, one clove, and then salt and pepper to add a bit of seasoning if you like. Another one that looks amazing that I haven't tried yet is grilled halloumi rocket and courgette salad. I don't know if I 100% like halloumi, however I love everything in this recipe so definitely going to give it a try. And then mozzarella and rocket cauliflower pizza. When I first saw this, I was thinking how can you have a cauliflower pizza? And to make the cauliflower pizza crust all you do is simply buy a cauliflower, you heat it up, you put it in water, boil the water and then place it in a food processor and mix it with egg, parmesan cheese. And that's it, it is so simple and it's really, really tasty. I think at first your taste buds are like, 
what is this pizza? Why is it weird? Why is it healthy? And after eating this, it made me think, why do restaurants not serve this? It's such a more healthier version. And if you're craving pizza, definitely make this. You don't even need the fatty other ones that you get in supermarkets. I mean, restaurants might sell that already. It might just be my knowledge that I don't know. Um, maybe some cool place in London sells it. But I will definitely recommend that one to you. A roasted vegetable and couscous salad with chilli and lime chicken and then warming winter shepherd's pie. But I think you're probably noticing, as well as I did when I first flicked through this book, was the recipes are so different to every other cookbook, I think. And I mean, you've even got chicken nuggets in here. Chicken nuggets with a twist. So let's move on to snacks. This is one of Alice's most asked questions, and it's definitely one that I asked. Kale dip with raw vegetable dippers. Courgette hummus on rice cakes. We've got a couple of superfood smoothies, so a chocolate one and a berry one. Cashew and goji berry energy balls, they look pretty epic and they're just so handy for having in the fridge. And then we come to one of the best sections of the book and this is the exercise section. So she's got all about getting started, why it's important to warm up because you don't want to cause yourself an injury. First of all, we've got legs. So Alice shows a number of different exercises that you can do and she's got the equipment that we need so I'm just going to do a little close up of that so you can see the different ones and um, as you can see you don't need a gym membership to complete these. So we've got step ups, wide sumo squats with two second pulse at the bottom, feet elevated glute bridges, squat jumps, wall sits, so you've really got everything there that you need for your legs. And section two is upper body and abs, full body press ups, mountain climbers, star twists. I don't want to ruin it all. I'm conscious I don't want to ruin it all for you. And then section three is legs and abs. So in this section, you've got walking lunges with a pulse. So you've got your own little personal trainer in this book as well. And then we've got the 360 full body workout. This is one that I do quite regularly jumping lunges basic squats, box jump onto a, a platform, single leg elevated hip thrusts and mountain climbers. That's always a very interesting one to do at the gym. I always feel very conscious. <laughs> and then at the back we've got express abs. So these are even more ab exercises, so oblique crunches, weighted crunches that you can do. And then the very last section of the book is her weekly plan for exercise. So you can see everything on a typical week that Alice would do. Monday is a rest day. On Tuesday, you can see the warm up she does, the workout, and then the finisher. And all of these exercises are in the book as well. So you can see how to do them and the correct way. And then the back of the book says, the body Bible isn't a diet. It's a permanent change to your way of life. Trust me, you'll never look back. And like I said at the beginning, it really is a Bible. And if there's something that you don't understand or that you want to ask, Alice will pretty much always reply on Twitter. So it's kind of good to have a little mentor there as well. And I was quite nervous filming this book because I think Alice is just brilliant. I wanted to do her some justice and I don't know if I have, but Hopefully I have, but I'll link the links below to her social media, so if you're not aware of Alice, do check them out. I really do recommend buying Alice's book. If you do buy it, let me know what recipes you like and which ones you try. If you see anything that you'd like me to make, please let me know below and I will see you next time.